А теперь слушайте меня, сука, блядь. Это чьи-то, блядь, отцы. И чьи-то сыновья. И те, блядь, которые не дают нам боеприпасы, сука, будут в аду. Повторю, любая внутренняя смута – смертельная угроза для нашей государственности, для нас, как нации. Это удар по России, по нашему народу. И наши действия по защите Отечества от такой угрозы будут жесткие. Все, кто сознательно встал на путь предательства, кто готовил вооруженный мятеж, встал на путь шантажа и террористических методов, понесут неименуемое наказание. As we delve into the escalating tensions in Russia, we must first understand the unusual and unprecedented standoff unfolding within the nation. The tycoon Yevgeny V. Prigozhin, also known as the Wagner chief, has declared a state of rebellion against the Russian military establishment. The military high command on Friday labeled these actions as an attempt at a coup against President Vladimir V. Putin. This open conflict, startling in its intensity, has sprung from deep-seated discord between the Wagner Group and the military regarding Russia's strategies in the Ukrainian conflict. Rumblings of military movements echoed across southern Russia, close to the Ukraine border, with claims that Prigozhin now has command over significant sections of the military headquarters. The scale of Wagner's influence and the genuine threat they pose to the Kremlin remain uncertain. But this audacious power grab represents the most severe test to Putin's authority since Russia's incursion into Ukraine 16 months ago. President Putin's response to the Wagner forces' actions came swiftly. He described their maneuvers as a betrayal to the country and its people, and promised decisive countermeasures. But what sparked this extraordinary tension within Russia's power structures? According to Prigozhin, the Russian military has been launching attacks against his mercenary encampments. This claim, while unverified, forms the crux of his bitter opposition. Prigozhin further painted the ongoing invasion of Ukraine as a racket, blaming a morally compromised Russian elite for the crisis. However, the magnate was clear that his army of approximately 25,000 mercenaries had no intention of staging a military coup. Instead, he indicated their resolve to combat the Russian defense ministry. This declaration led Russian authorities to charge Prigozhin with organizing an armed rebellion, an accusation that ratchets up the stakes in an already tense situation. In a series of developments, videos emerged showing Russian armored vehicles in Rostov-on-Don, a southern city close to Ukraine, where Prigozhin's forces had been operating. The governor urged residents to stay indoors, emphasizing the government's commitment to their safety, while another convoy of military equipment was seen in Voronezh, north of Rostov. As the events within Russia unfold, the world and Ukraine's armed forces watch closely waiting for the next act in this dramatic confrontation. Turning our focus to the man at the heart of this unfolding rebellion, Yevgeny V. Prigozhin, is more than just an influential tycoon. From his base in St. Petersburg, Prigozhin has woven an intricate web of influence, linking him directly to the upper echelons of Russian power. His ties to President Putin run deep, with Prigozhin being among the elite group of oligarchs favored by the Kremlin. However, his notoriety extends beyond Russia's borders. In 2018, he was one of 13 Russians indicted by a US federal grand jury for alleged interference in the 2016 American election. The Wagner mercenary force under Prigozhin's control is an entity of shadow and intrigue. First gaining attention during Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, this private military company has been a tool for Moscow's influence in countries like Syria, Libya, Central African Republic, Sudan, Mali, and Mozambique. Notably, the force played a significant role in the recent assault on the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, further proving its critical value to the Kremlin's objectives in Ukraine. Now we must delve into what has led this favored oligarch to challenge the very establishment that has supported his rise. Over the recent months, Prigozhin has levied a series of damning allegations against Russia's military leadership. He blames them for failing to supply his forces with adequate ammunition and for dismissing the struggles his soldiers are facing on the ground. These broadsides, initially tolerated by the Kremlin, 
have prompted speculation about Prigogine's intent to expand his political influence, which could potentially threaten Putin's grip on power. This simmering dissent reached a boiling point on Saturday, when the Prosecutor General announced that Prigogine was under investigation, with charges that carry a maximum prison term of 20 years. Following these charges, President Putin himself addressed the volatile situation in Rostov-on-Don on state television. In his speech, he assured the nation of decisive action to stabilize the situation. He lamented that the actions of Prigozhin and his forces were creating division and sowing seeds of defeatism, sentiments that reverberate throughout Russia as it watches this power struggle unfold. We now focus our attention on the front line of this internal conflict, Rostov-on-Don. This southern Russian city, with a population nearing a million, has become the stage for an unusual power struggle. Online videos verified by reputable sources showcase armored Russian military vehicles and troops mobilizing in the city. Additional footage reveals soldiers exiting these vehicles, guns pointed at a critical military command post that Prigozhin claims to have seized control of. The governor of the Rostov region has called for residents to stay indoors reassuring the public that all necessary measures are being taken for their safety. Similarly, the governor of the neighboring Voronezh region reported a convoy of military equipment moving along a local highway. All of this suggests a significant military response, although the exact direction and objectives of this mobilization remain unclear. As we consider the implications of this unprecedented event, it is clear that it marks a significant challenge to President Putin's authority. With a reported strength of 25,000, Prigozhin's Wagner forces present a formidable opponent. However, the extent of their control and the precise threat they pose to the Kremlin is yet to be fully understood. Regardless of the outcome, the fact that an entity like Wagner, initially empowered by the Kremlin, could mount such an open challenge is testament to a power shift within Russia. This rebellion by a Russian mercenary tycoon, accompanied by accusations of a corrupt Russian elite exploiting the Ukraine invasion, certainly adds a complex new dimension to Russia's internal politics. As we watch these events unfold, we are reminded of the response from Ukraine's armed forces, who simply posted three words on Twitter that perfectly capture the global sentiment. We are watching. As we end our report on this significant development in Russian politics, we pose a question to our viewers. How do you perceive this power struggle between Prigozhin and the Kremlin? Will it lead to significant change in Russian politics, or is it merely a momentary rebellion? Please share your views in the comments below. We value your insights and perspectives. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Red Watch TV. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and we look forward to seeing you next time.